Good morning everyone and a special welcome to the boys and girls and to their family and friends who under normal circumstances would have been joining with us in the church here for our annual Children's Day service. We have missed having all of our young people along week by week in this room for the Sunday School and upstairs for our Explore and Reach meetings over the past couple of months. But we as a church have been remembering you and your families in prayer and we hope that you've all been keeping safe and well throughout this lockdown period. I'd like to take this opportunity again to thank the parents and guardians of all our young people who send them along week by week. As we were unable to finish our Sunday school term off together in our usual fashion with the Children's Day service in May, the teachers and some of our pupils have joined together in order to give you a virtual flavour of our Children's Day 2020. Auntie Marion will be doing some courses. The Stelfords are going to recite the Lord's Prayer for us. Hannah and Matthew Daly have been doing a memory verse. And Auntie Gillian is doing a quiz for us based on today's Bible lesson. So I suggest you listen carefully to it so that you will be able to answer the questions later on. We will also have a Bible chain reading from our teachers and pupils. But first, we are going to pass over to Hugh who is going to open in prayer for us. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank thee for another opportunity to come into thy presence and to open thy word, especially to the boys and girls. Lord, we thank thee for the Sunday school here on the Raven Hill Road. We thank you for the team of workers who reach out to the boys and girls. Lord, we pray today for the word as it goes forth, for the recital of the scripture, for the singing of the songs, for the Bible lesson. Lord, speak to hearts, we pray. We know thy word is our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Lord, draw all men, even boys and girls, unto thyself today. Undertake for us now. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Hello, girls and boys. Um, teacher Marion here and we just want to let you know we really missed you in Sunday school over the past few months but we're really looking forward to when Sunday school starts up again and I hope you can join us. We're looking forward to welcoming you back. So we're going to sing our first chorus and I hope you've got your wings going and ready to do the actions. Of course it's your favourite, the raven's wings go flap, flap, flap. The Ribbon swings went flap, 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 down to the river they flew. They carried me, they carried me, this ball and told them to. A little bit of one went picking up sticks as I just passed that way. She baked to the cake, oh boy, the moon, never, never was the wind. God's word will never fail, no, oh, never fail. loves the little children and we're reminded of John 3 and 16 for God so loved the world all the children of the world Jesus loves the little children We have been learning the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is an example that Jesus gave to his disciples how to pray. It is found in it is found in Matthew chapter six verse nine, nine to thirteen. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, for deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hi boys and girls, hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to teach you a memory verse from the Bible. And it's found in Psalm 119, verse 11. So have you, as you probably guessed, Psalms is found in the Old Testament. And it's Psalm 119, verse 11. So I'm going to say it through and then I want you to copy me, okay? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Okay, so we're all going to say it together, so you need to help me out here, okay? Ready? One, two. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Okay, so we're going to do my volume control here. And as you know, this is the normal volume. This is really high, and this is really low, okay? So we're going to start at normal, and then I'm going to move my hand, and you need to adjust whatever volume you're saying at, okay? So I want your mummies and daddies to be able to hear you say it really loud when I go up here. And then you to whisper it down here, okay? So one, two. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Okay, what was that like? Did your mummy and daddies hear it? I hope so. So we're all gonna say it one more time together. Okay, give me your best attempt. Ready? One, two. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Okay, that was really good, guys. Well done. Thank you. See you later. Yeah. Hello, Bingo. I had a good memory. Thy word is I hid in my heart that I not sin against thee. We are now going to have a Bible chain reading from some of the teachers and pupils of our Sunday schools. The portion of scripture that we're going to read is Psalm 34, and we trust that the Lord will bless the reading of his word to your hearts. Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked on to him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles, and the angel of the Lord and Campeth round about them that fear him and delivered them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, yea, is saints. For, for there is no want to them. That fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come ye children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life, and loveth many days, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, 
not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. This little course simply says, I am a C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N, and that means Christ is in your heart. It's a good course. Today I want us to think about what things make us proud, or in other words, what do we like to boast about? There are many things in the world that people like to show off about. You will find that there are world records for everything imaginable. Some people spend their lives training and working hard to try and be the strongest or fastest person in the world, or to be able to jump the highest or the furthest. Other people like to boast about how smart they are or how much money they have. People can even boast about things they have no real control over. There are world records for the oldest, the tallest and the shortest people in the world, people with the largest feet and even the longest fingernails. If you have brothers or sisters at home, I'm sure you like to play games or have competitions to see who can do something the best. Or maybe at school you like to compete against your friends at sports day to see who is the quickest or most skillful at something. So here is a question. What is the most important thing in the world to be able to boast about? The Bible has a lot to say about pride and boasting or showing off, or another way of putting it is to glory in something. The two verses we are going to look at are in Jeremiah chapter 9 verses 23 and 24. Verse 23 says, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, Neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches. In this verse we find out what God isn't impressed with, and therefore we learn what we shouldn't be impressed with or proud of ourselves. First of all, in verse 23 God says we aren't to boast about how smart or wise we are. This is not because there is anything wrong with being smart or wise. The Bible instructs us many times to be wise and to seek knowledge, and it tells us that it is even better to get wisdom and understanding than gold or silver. But Proverbs warns us that we should be careful not to be wise in our own eyes. We are to fear the Lord and depart from evil. When we compare our knowledge and the wisdom of even the wisest people in the world to the wisdom of God, we see how far short man comes. The Bible in Romans talks about how deep and rich God's wisdom and knowledge are. We will never be able to understand or know as much as God does, so man's wisdom is not worth boasting about. Secondly, God says that the mighty man should not glory in his might. While there are people in this world that we would consider very strong or very powerful, no one is able to compare with the almighty God of heaven. Think of Goliath who boasted in front of the Israelite army. He thought he was so big and powerful that no one would be able to defeat him. But God showed that even the biggest warrior could be defeated by a small shepherd boy with only a stone, a sling and most importantly, God on his side. 
The most important power that we can experience is the gospel. For Romans chapter 1 verse 16 tells us that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. The only way to be saved is to believe the gospel and accept Christ as our saviour. While there are many things we are not to boast about or glory in, the gospel is one thing that we are never to be ashamed of. Thirdly, God says that the rich man is not to glory in his riches. There are many people in the world who are obsessed with money and how much of it they can get. Money and wealth do not bring lasting happiness. It is important to remember that money is only temporary. You can't take it with you when you die. Jesus asked a very important question in Mark chapter 8 verse 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Your soul is the most valuable thing you have. Do not trade it for anything in the world. Think of the prodigal son. He had all the money he could have wanted, but he wasted it all. He was left with nothing from the world or any of its pleasure, and he was left lying in a pigsty. But he realised that his father could supply all his need. He said to himself in Luke chapter 15, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. This is what you need to do if you're not saved and haven't had your sins forgiven. Without confessing your sin to God, you cannot be forgiven and escape the punishment of that sin in hell. Now we come to the second verse of our lesson today, where we find out what God does want us to be able to boast about. Verse 24 says, But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. God wants us to understand and know that he is the Lord of all the earth. He wants us to come to him firstly to repent of our sin and trust in him for salvation. Then he wants us to honour him with our lives by living according to the instructions he gives us in the Bible. He wants us to know that we can trust him to meet all our needs and to depend on him in the times we are afraid or worried. This verse tells us that God exercises or practices loving kindness. I'm sure you have heard many times that God is a God of love. You may even know some famous verses that show us how much God loves us. John 3.16 tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You might also know Romans chapter 5 verse 8, which says, God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. There is no love like the love God has for sinners, but you need to experience his loving kindness for yourself. There is no point in knowing those things about God and then not asking him to forgive you and save you. That would be like being on a sinking ship and knowing there is a lifeboat but not getting onto it. The next thing we need to realise is that God exercises judgement. The Bible describes God in Genesis chapter 18 as the judge of all the earth. God has given us laws in his word to show us the good and right way we are to live our lives. Just like we have judges in our courts on earth, God judges people for breaking his laws. The bad news is that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But there is good news, as we saw in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ took the punishment that we deserve for our sin on the cross of Calvary. He has provided a way for us to have our sins covered, so that if we ask for his forgiveness and accept him as our saviour, then God will not judge us for our sin. If you are saved, then Jesus covers you with his righteousness and gives you a new heart so that we want to live a life that is pleasing to God. No one will be perfect before they get to heaven, but God starts a work in someone's heart when they get saved. He gives us a desire to become more and more like him each day, perfect, righteous, loving and forgiving. Finally, this verse tells us that it is in these things that God delights. God doesn't care how smart or strong or rich you are. You don't have to pass a test or achieve something amazing in order to become a Christian. God has provided everything that you need in order for you to be saved. All you have to do is accept his free gift of salvation 
by putting your faith and trust in Christ and turning away or repenting from your sin. Luke chapter 15 verse 10 tells us that there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. God and the angels in heaven rejoice over every single person that becomes a Christian. Will it be you that gives them joy next by coming and putting your faith in Christ? Will you accept him as your own saviour? If you have any questions about becoming a Christian, or even if you don't have a Bible and would like one, then please get in touch with us at Martyrs Memorial Church. Now, let's see how much you have taken in by doing a quiz. Now we're going to have the quiz on the lesson that Joel told us. I have two helpers today, Phoebe and Rose. And Rose is going to choose the teddy for the boys and girls. And Phoebe is going to choose the teddy for the grown-ups. And behind each teddy, there's a score. So the first question is an observation question for the boys and girls. Boys and girls, how many boys were holding bundles of money? That's correct, two. Rose, would you like to choose a teddy? Which one would you like to go for? Rubble. Wow, it's number five. That's a great score. <laughs> yes. Now this is for the grown-ups and Phoebe will choose one in a moment. Grown-ups, how many pigs were in the picture of the boy of the prodigal son? Three. That's excellent. Phoebe, would you like to choose one? A lemon one. Wow. It's 20. Wow, that is a big score. The next question is for the boys and girls. What strong man was defeated by a shepherd boy with God's help? Goliath is the right answer. Well done, boys and girls. Rose, would you like to choose one? Here we go. <laughs> Number 10. Well done, that's also a... Cheese, cheese yeah, shoes on that. That is lovely. That's a great <laughs> score too. Grown-ups, what power must we never be ashamed of? The gospel. That's the right answer. Phoebe, would you like to choose one? Number two for the grown-ups. And the last question for the boys and girls. Name a famous verse that tells us of the love of God. John 3 verse 16 is correct. There are many more too, but that's a very famous one. Rose, would you like to choose your last one? This one? There we go. Oh, and it is number five. And the very last question for the grown-ups. What fills God and his angels in heaven with joy? A sinner who repents. That's the final answer. And thank you so much. Phoebe, would you like to choose your last one? Oh, it's stuck here. And it's number one. So we're going to add up all the scores to see who won. So the boys and girls got a great big 20. Well done. And the grown-ups got a great big 23. So the grown-ups have won today. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Phil Harton and his team of helpers are bringing to you a summer Bible club over the internet. And it's called the High Five Summer Bible Club. And that's because he's going to be presenting some of the highest truths that we find in God's word about God himself. Yes, tell me more about God is a very important desire to have and question to ask today. And he will be doing exactly that. Make sure you join him for the very first session on Monday the 13th of July at 10 o'clock in the morning. It only lasts 30 minutes and every morning that same week. Tuesday the 14th, Wednesday, Thursday, right through to the Friday. And if you don't want to miss out on all the extras that go with this week of Bible Club, make sure you register your information. And a craft pack will be sent to you. You can register, by the way, from tomorrow morning. And then all the materials you need, worksheets, pens, competition details, they'll be posted to your address so that you don't miss out on anything. Don't miss it. See you there.